Good morning boys and girls. Happy Easter. I hope this morning has been an extra special one for you. Today's Breakfast Club is a wee bit different because we've pre-recorded this. So I can't speak to you and have you answer me directly. Um, however, I really or we really hope that the programme that we've put together this morning that you'll find a lot of fun inside. There's activities, there are um, songs to be learned and in fact I won't tell you everything because I don't want to spoil the surprises. There are a few surprises. I hope, we hope you enjoy them. So, did you get an Easter egg this morning? Maybe one like this or perhaps a posh one like this one? Did you get more than one Easter egg? Have you eaten your Easter egg or not opened it yet? You know, when I was a young girl, I had a sister and three brothers. And what we got was an egg, like this, a hen's egg. Say hello to Clarence. This is Clarence. Hi, Clarence. But we got uh, an egg and then we would hard boil it and paint it and, and make it, you know, a, a nice decoration on the egg. Then you would go find a hill to roll it down. And our hill was just off the Stirling Road that we used to go to. Um, in fact, part of that hill was taken away in order to make the access road for the ambulances in the new hospital. It was all kind of flattened there. But that was the hill that we used to go to. And we rolled our eggs until the shell cracked. And then you peeled the rest off and you ate the egg. Now, chocolate eggs then were really quite expensive. So if you got one egg, you considered yourself to be very lucky indeed. Maybe you're wondering though, why do we celebrate with chocolate Easter eggs? Why celebrate with those? Well, the egg reminds us of, and rolling the egg reminds us of rolling the stone, um, the stone being rolled away from Jesus' tomb. And the egg itself, well, it reminds us of um, new life and, and new beginnings. And we get new life and new beginnings in and through Jesus. But that's what it reminds us of. The Victorians, well, they were responsible for introducing or, I suppose, inventing the, the chocolate egg way back in the year 1873. But at that time, it really was only the very wealthy people who could afford chocolate. It was a pure luxury at that point. Um, I think that we should now look at the video of the first Easter and have a wee look at that. It's God's story and it's Easter, so with no more ado, let's watch the video. God's Story, Easter. So part of God's story is about Easter and it begins like this. You might know Easter as the Sunday a ginormous bunny hides chocolate inside plastic eggs. But Easter is really all about how much Jesus loves us and how God sent him to rescue us. Remember how the Jews, God's special family, were waiting for a king to come rescue them? Well, Jesus was the king, and this rescue was the whole reason he came to earth. God had already rescued the Jews once before, but this time it was going to include everyone. So one night, Jesus told his friends about the rescue. Exciting, right? But talking about this rescue was sad. That's because Jesus was going to rescue the world by dying. Kids, every mean or bad thing we do deserves punishment. By dying, Jesus took our punishment. Lots of things in life have good parts and bad parts. And just like candy bars are mostly good, as long as you brush your teeth after you eat one, this story is a really good one. Anyway, talking about the rescue made Jesus sad since he didn't really want to die. Thankfully, we can talk to God when we're sad, so Jesus took a few friends into a garden to pray. In the garden, a guy named Judas, who people thought was Jesus' friend, came with some people to help arrest Jesus. Peter, one of Jesus' true friends, was so mad he cut off a servant's ear with his sword. But Jesus didn't want his friends to hurt others, so Jesus healed the ear and let them arrest him. Then Jesus was taken to trial. One of the most powerful men in the city, Pontius Pilate, wanted to let Jesus go. But many of the people wanted Jesus to die. They didn't believe he was the son of God or any kind of king. Even after all the miracles Jesus did, like healing sick people and making blind people see, they didn't believe in him. 
The people were so mad, they started yelling, kill him! So Pontius Pilate let the soldiers take Jesus. The soldiers made fun of the idea that Jesus was a king. They put a crown of thorns on his head and nailed him to a cross. Many people watched, but not all of them wanted Jesus to die. His mother and close friends were there too. Just imagine how they must have felt. Once Jesus was up on the cross, the sun stopped shining for three whole hours in the middle of the day. But those soldiers kept right on making fun of him. They said, if you're really God's son, why don't you just call on some angels to save you? Jesus could have called on angels to save him, but he loved us so much that he wanted to rescue us. So instead, he prayed to God, Father, I place my life into your hands. At that moment, Jesus died. And when he died, the soldiers who had just killed him realized he really was the Son of God. Later, Jesus was put into a tomb and a big rock blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends thought that was the end. But three days later, God sent an angel to roll the stone away. Don't worry, Jesus could get out on his own. The angel moved the rock so everybody else could see the tomb was empty. Jesus' friends were the first to stop by the tomb. The angel said, He has risen! which is another way of saying, Jesus is alive. Nobody could believe it. Jesus took our punishment and then proved he really is the Son of God by coming back to life. Now, if we choose to follow Jesus, God forgives us for all the wrong things we do because Jesus already took our punishment. And that's the story of Easter. But that's not all there is. Here's a quick version of what happened after the angel told the good news. Jesus' friends got scared. Jesus appeared to them. They saw his scars. It was really him. Now they could share the good news too. Jesus appeared to more than 500 people. He went back up to heaven. And the best part? He promised to come back someday for everybody who follows him. And all that is a part of God's story. Hello everybody, we're going to learn how to make some lovely Easter biscuits and you've already got some of the items delivered to you in your bag so go and get that quickly and make sure that you've got everything you need. You should have some digestive biscuits and uh, we're going to need four digestive biscuits which I think is what you have. So we'll put two down first and we'll need those two in a minute uh, you've also got some jam like this and some chocolate little squares of chocolate and some eggs oops I better be very careful with these or I'll drop the eggs all over the place some little eggs because we're going to make a nest on the top of our biscuit because it's Easter and we've got eggs to put in it now the first thing that I want to do actually involves the chocolate, funnily enough. We're not going to use the chocolate until later on, but I think it's best to get it ready first. And for this, you're going to need a grater, or if you don't have a grater, maybe a potato peeler would do, or vegetable peeler, whatever you do with that would do. Um, I quite like using the peeler because that gives us some nice little curls and what you're going to do is grate the chocolate. But the disadvantage of using a peeler like this is it's quite slow and you know what happens to chocolate in hot hands? It starts to melt. So maybe we'll speed things up a little bit and use or greater, but that's made some quite nice big curls of chocolate. Right, now, technique with the greater. Use greater with big holes like this. I did try the little holes like that, but that just gets dust, more or less. So we'll do this. It is quicker. It is a lot quicker. So your hands aren't going to get quite so sticky doing it this way. How are we doing? Oh, need a bit more. 
so and as you can see I've got a little bit of plastic maybe cling film wrapped around it so that um, I don't get chocolate all over my hands right here we go maybe I should go back to my potato peeler but I think we might have enough chocolate by now let me see oh wow that looks pretty good so we'll put that down and we'll make sure that all the chocolate is on the plate and not in the grater. There we are, loads of lovely chocolate. So we'll put that to the side and all these other... Do you know what I forgot to tell you to do right at the start? And I had it in my head. That's the very first thing that we have to do because not only can we get sticky now, but before we start, wash these hands. So I did it, but then I forgot to tell you to do it. So make sure that your hands are washed. Right, next now, biscuits. And the other things that you're going to need, I've got two knives here, nice clean knives, and I've got two spoons. So I'll take one of the knives, got my two biscuits ready because you're actually going to make two Easter treats. Um, maybe maybe you can have one and give one to somebody else or perhaps you want to be very generous and give them both away. That would be lovely. So with my knife we'll get some jam out of our jam pocket and spread it on the biscuit. Now it depends. If you like a lot of jam you might want to use a whole packet but I think actually that'd be too much to put in one biscuit so I'm going to use one packet of jam for two biscuits. Here we go. Biscuit number two coming I think this has actually got a bit more on it than the first one. Not to worry. There we go. Nicely spread and we can put that over to the side as well and that knife that we're finished with too. Now two more biscuits on top of the first ones. That's, that's us about halfway there in fact. So we've got our two biscuits doing quite nicely. Now if you've got an apron that's quite a good idea because then you can wipe your sticky fingers on it. Or you might want to wash them again. Now, icing sugar. I reckon that from the icing sugar that you got, you probably don't need all of it. In fact, you maybe need about half of it. So I'm going to put half of this icing sugar into my mixing bowl. And that's a good idea. If you tip out all your icing sugar into a bowl, then you can see what you've got and think, well, actually, I'll put half of it into the bowl to mix. There we are. And in my other bowl here, we've got some water, cold water. You need cold water to make icing. And the other spoon that I've got, the clean one that I've not used and I haven't done anything with, I'm going to get two teaspoons of water. Now, you might think, oh, that's not nearly enough. But I think it might well be, and if you watch it very carefully, you see that the water is spreading through the icing and it's all mixing in very stickily. Now, in fact, that was quite a good move because my icing is quite soft. And because I've got quite a lot of it left, well, I'm just going to add a little bit more of it. Ideally with the um, spoon that I haven't got all wet, but never mind. So we'll put another spoonful of icing in and see what happens. Because we don't want the icing to be too runny. If it's too runny, it'll just all run off our biscuits. There we go. I think that's a bit better. That's nice and stiff. And I think that will sit very nicely. Now... This is white icing, but perhaps you might want to make it a wee bit of an Easter treat with some yellow or green. 
or even pink. I've got lots of different colours of icing in my cupboard, but I'm going to stick with the white just now. Um, I might add a wee drop of yellow, I don't know. Let's see what we do. Yep, perhaps a little bit more icing sugar in this. There, and that's the advantage of not using it all up at once because we want it to be really, really stiff. Now, time to put our icing on. And we're going to use half for one biscuit. Now, I like making things, but one of the reasons I like making them is then that you get to eat them. And there's somebody watching me just now on the other side of the camera who's just waiting for me to be finished so that you can try them out. Is that right, Dave? <laughs> I think so. Right, I'm going to use my other knife now just to make sure we get all the icing off the spoon and spread it on to determined to come off. Yeah, there we go. And then we can spread it all onto the biscuits. Oh, wow. Nice and thick. That's just about right. And it doesn't matter if it looks a bit strange around the edges, it will smooth itself out. And it will be really tasty. There we go. Now, I wish I could see here's one I made earlier. Um, because there was one I made earlier, but it's been eaten already. <laughs> Wonder who would have eaten that. This is where I need my third teaspoon. I forgot about that. Keep a clean teaspoon. Here we go. My lovely assistant has supplied the teaspoons. Right, and we'll just put a little bit of chocolate on the middle. Now, if you're very good, you can maybe put a little heap and then make it into a nest shape. But I'm not very good. But we want a kind of a nest shape in the middle. Now, the reason that we grated the chocolate first was that as the icing is setting, the chocolate will stick to it. It actually, it doesn't very well, just on the top, but not to worry. So that looks quite reasonable nest, I think. And now, our little eggs go in the middle of the nest. There we are. And this one's getting pink eggs. There we are. And all done. So make your biscuits and enjoy sharing your biscuits with somebody else and have a lovely Easter. Now, I think it's time for a song. Hi guys. Great to see you all. Today we're going to be going over one of the songs we've done at Young Church Breakfast Club. So hopefully you all join in and let's get started. <laughs> Me, he can do anything. 
everything If I run over here, if I run over there God is everywhere and He loves me When I look up, 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 I know He's real When I look down, 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 I believe what I found When I look in God's Word and I search for Him, He rewards me I hope you had great fun with Lily there and I hope you managed to join in and were dancing about with her and weren't too full from all the Easter eggs that you've maybe had already this morning. Um, I'm now going to pass you on to Marianne who's going to show you how to decorate eggs which sounds like great fun so have a great time and I'll see you soon. Bye! Okay good morning boys and girls. Well inside your bag um, that you've got you'll have a little egg now this isn't a real egg but obviously these ones are real eggs now today we're going to decorate the eggs um, now I think also inside your bag you've got some felt pens now I thought it would be a good idea if instead of decorating it with sticking it with things we could design our own emoji really and we all know what emojis are. See, I've got one here. That's obviously a smiley face as well. And like of this sort of thing. Obviously, my eggs are brown. But anyway, and then we've got this one. I mean, you could put hair on them like I've done with this one. And it's just winking at you. Now, these eggs have not been boiled or anything yet. So, oh, here I've got my attempt at Garfield. Not that good. But anyhow, and then I've got Angry Birds as well. So you can see that's some of the ideas that you could do by using your felt pens, using your just imagination, really. You could do all kinds of faces um, and all kinds of colours of hair or beards or anything that you would like to draw. You could maybe even draw um, a face on it that looks like your, your mum or your dad or your granny or something like that. Um, I had a very good silver pen in mine, um, uh, in my selection of pens and I thought hmm, I could maybe do a self-portrait one. But actual fact, in all honesty, I ran out of eggs. But we've got all these ones here. And there's plenty of ideas. So give yourself time and design the nicest or the prettiest or the ugliest face that you can think of on your eggs. Okay? Right, well, and again, if you have used your egg and you think, well, that's not the best thing I could do, raid the fridge, ask mum or dad and see if they could maybe boil the egg first and then, then use it to make a really good design on it. See, no sticking, just pens. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you enjoy doing that today or whenever you get a chance to do it. And when we get back together again, the Sunday that we're back together, I'd like to see the results of what they actually look like. Now you've seen all mine, so it's only fair that I should see yours and we can see which ones that we like the very best. But I think everybody is going to be really enjoying just trying and having some fun. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? having some fun this morning and
then remember don't do it on a chocolate egg because I don't think it would work and you would have to eat it afterwards and that wouldn't be a good idea at this time of the morning but anyway so I'm going to say bye bye at the moment and you can get on with everything else that we're doing this morning and God bless to you all have a lovely Easter day bye Ah, good morning, boys and girls. Oh, so good to be talking with you again this morning. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. Well, this morning, Sinka asked me to come along and show you a very interesting experiment with an egg. An egg, you said? Now, I want you to try this at home, okay? But, however, you must ask your parents or carers for their permission and for an egg you need an egg you also need a bag and i'll explain that in a moment or two so this the egg you are going to examine the egg to make sure that there are no flaws or cracks or in any kind of flaw in the egg so this one is fine no cracks then taking the egg in a hand with no rings on it okay put the egg in your hand and put your hand into the bag can you see my hand is in the bag and i have the egg now i want to squeeze this egg as hard as i possibly can squeeze it as with all my might and all my strength i am squeezing and squeezing harder oh Perhaps you think this egg is a trick egg. I can assure you it is not, and I will prove that in a moment or two. Maybe though you want to show this to mum or dad or grandpapa and ask them if they would like to squeeze the egg too, because I think maybe papa's got more strength in his hand than you do. So squeezing the egg and we have the bag in case of accident so squeezing the egg and nothing nothing it is not even moving now i'm not going to put the egg out of the way in case you think i am cheating this egg is a real one there we are a real egg now you see how easily i cracked the egg and broke it and let me show you how fragile the shell is. With the least amount of pressure, I can squeeze and break it into tiny, tiny pieces. And yet, when it was in my hand, I squeezed it with all my might and nothing happened. Why am I telling you this? Well, I am going to hand you back now to Sangha and she will explain I hope you have a fantastic Easter day. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, Professor. Thank you for sharing that experiment with us. Um, and children, I hope that you do the experiment at home. Mind you, please, please ask permission um, and maybe get Mum and Dad to do it along with you because it's a lot of fun. There's no trick involved. It's it's true, as, as tightly as you can possibly squeeze that egg, it won't break. But why was I showing you that this morning, or why did I ask the professor to show you that? Well, I hope that by watching how that egg does not break, it will help us understand that when we believe in Jesus and have faith in him, then you become a child of God. God is your Father in heaven. God asks that we trust and obey him. Now, that doesn't, matter. that doesn't mean that we become like Harry Potter and have a magical cloak that, become, and that makes us invincible to everything. What it does mean, though, is if sad things happen in your life that you may be upset or even cry for a time, but young and fragile as you are, you will never be crushed or broken by these things. 
with the help of God the Father and the love of God the Son, Jesus, you will cope with whatever life gives you because you will be firmly held in God's hands. And that's the great news of Easter. In an eggshell. Exciting news, isn't it? <laughs> so, we really hope that you've enjoyed our breakfast club this morning. We've had fun and games, haven't we? Oh well, maybe not. We had no games. I'll need to sort that. So, we'll have a game. What if I asked you to make up as many words as you can think of from these three words? He is risen. He is risen. So, the task is to make as many words as you can from these three words. There can You can only use each letter once. So, for example, there is only one H, that's way, and one R, but there are two E's, two S's and two I's, okay? So, you can only use each of these letters once. Every word has got to be found in the dictionary, and there can be no plurals. There will be prizes, though. First prize. Da -da, drum roll, please. Da -da. First prize is a lovely big Easter egg to share because I know that you're going to ask for help in your family. You can ask your great uncle if he's good at, at crosswords. Second prize. And here we go. Third prize. So it's worthwhile doing this and it'll be good fun as well. Keep you busy. And don't forget the other competition that I set for you, which was to... Find a name for the donkey. Donkey's fed up with just being called donkey. So there's a prize for that one as well. Now, don't forget about the wonder walks that I sent out in the email. That's, it's, there's lots of activities involved in that. I sent it in an email and it'll keep you all busy during the school holidays. And Martin's great offer of, of being involved in the music side of the church. So those, those things, um, don't forget about those either. Now, thanks to Margaret, to Sharon and Lily, to Marianne. So thank you to everyone. Thank you to you for listening and coming along. And from me and the rest of the team, for now, I'll say bye.